Bye. Smile the video with the That whenever we have a cut and during the process of healing, there are pus formation <laughs> and occasionally pain and swelling. Well, most of us are oblivious to the numerous battles fought between the white blood cells and the immune system. In the immune system, it's a complex and highly organized structure, mainly made up of white blood cells. Okay. Fever, pain, and swelling are signs of inflammation, and this tells us that our immune system is being called into action. Blood vessels at the site of injury expand to allow white blood cells and proteins of the immune system to enter the tissue. White blood cells carry out several activities when it encounters pathogens. Does the word pathogen ring any bells? Well, pathogens are harmful microorganisms. For example, bacteria, yeast, yeast, virus, and parasites. Or anything else that causes harm to our body. There are several ways to kill pathogens. <laughs> with pathogens via cell surface markers, in other words, the unit pumps, and engulf the pathogens and eat them up. This, program, this process is known as phagocytosis. Hmm, now let's take a look at how phagocytosis occurs. What you are seeing now is the actual cell eating process. A white blood cell is chasing after a pathogen. After a while, the pathogen is being engulfed by the persistent white blood cell and phagocytosis has just occurred. So let's say we have a cut on our finger or anywhere else in the body and pathogens gain entry via the opponent. How will our white blood cells know where is the site of infection and how do they travel there? What circulates around our body? Blood. So, all white blood cells get to various parts of our body via the blood system. However, the blood system alone is insufficient for the white blood cells to recognize the site of infection in more isolated parts of the body, for example, a cut on the fingertip. Therefore, that is when cytokines come into the picture. Cytokines are a cellular form of communication between cells and very important and crucial in the immune system. is being engulfed by the white blood cell. I'll draw you an illustration. This is a cell and this is the cell nucleus. And this is the bacteria that has been engulfed. And the bacteria is enclosed in what we call a phagosome. In this cell, there are many organelles called lysosomes. And these lysosomes actually contain digestive enzymes. What happens is, these lysosomes will fuse with the phagosomes to form what is called a phagolysosome. And pus formation occurs after white blood cells die after phagocytosis. Extracellular killing is another method whereby 
plus cells release its toxins into the environment to kill off pathogens. You must be wondering why do we need extracellular killing when we have phagocytosis? Imagine this. Can white blood cell engulf something that is much larger than itself? For example, ringworm? Well, the answer is quite obvious. It's a definite no. Therefore, extracellular killing takes place on pathogens that are too large to be engulfed. So, how does extracellular killing occur? Let's take a look at the video. Another way of killing pathogens is to form pores in their cell membrane that leads to cell death, also known as membrane attack complex. What exactly is a membrane attack complex? Well, it's simple. Basically, the proteins of the immune system receive signals from our immune cells to bind and attach to the pathogens. These proteins upon binding will polymerize to form a pore in the pathogen. These pores lead to cellular leakage of the pathogen and thus, the pathogens will die eventually. Each time, after our body has encountered a disease and recovered from it, our immune cells will produce memory cells that will attack the same pathogen, causing disease if it invades again at a much faster rate. These memory cells remember the pathogenic uniform and have a long lifespan in our body. This is how our immune system gets stronger with each pathogenic encounter. For example, chickenpox. People who have had chickenpox before, they have a very low chance of getting it infected with it again because the memory cells are able to recognize and attack the same chickenpox pathogens quicker so that the pathogens do not have a chance to attack our body cells. Compare a person who lives a carefree life to a person who lives a stressful life. Which one do you think falls sick more often? If you guess the latter, then you're right. Stress increases the production of CD8, a glycoprotein which suppresses our immune system. This suppression in turn leads to an, to an increased risk of viral infection, which is no wonder why many students fall sick during the exam period. Have you been exercising lately? Exercising not only keeps us healthy, but also strengthens our immune system. boost the production of macrophages, a white blood cell which kills off the bacteria in our body. When you exercise, your blood circulation improves and this allows your white blood cell to travel faster and kill off pathogens. So let's make it a habit. Take a jog around the field at least twice a week. What's more, it doesn't hurt to have that Jessica Alba's figure while doing so. Time to hit the gym before. Do you love broccoli? If you don't, so you better start eating now. As humans age, the immune system weakens due to free radicals produced in our body. Studies have shown that a chemical called saprophene that is found in vegetables like cabbage, cauliflower, turnip, and broccoli is able to combat the injurious effects of free radicals that can damage the white blood cell. As such, saprophene is able to reverse the decline of cellular immune function and revive the immune system. Melatonin is a natural hormone which is secreted by the body after night falls. And melatonin is actually also essential in making us feel drowsy and letting us enter a good night's sleep every day. Melatonin being an antioxidant, it actually supports our immune system function by killing cancer cells while we sleep at night. In such a way, everyone should have 8 to 10 hours of sleep. But try your best to get it, right? So I'll go to find out. See ya! Hi, now that the video has ended, we have hoped that you learn more about the immune system and how it works. If you have any questions or queries regarding the immune system, please do not hesitate to contact us and we will do our best to answer your questions. And please remember to leave some comments on how the video has benefited you or what you have learned from the video. Thank you very much.